Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the beautiful Azores. We have two stories from Elsie Spicer Eels. In the first story, sometimes the foolish are the best marriage partners. In the second story, as echoes of O, the Tsar of the Forest, where magicians show off their talents by changing into different things. Okay, let's begin. Fresh Figs, the story of a clever youth and a foolish one. Long ago there lived a little maid who fell ill. Her father was very rich, and he did everything he could for her. One day she said, If only I had some fresh figs, I'm sure I'd feel better. Now it was in the month of January. It would be many long months before the fresh figs would be ripe. The rich man was greatly worried. Not even his fortune could ripen the figs, as he well knew. Nevertheless, he decided to advertise and therefore said, Whoever shall bring some fresh figs to my daughter shall marry her if he be young. If he be old, he shall receive his reward in money. This announcement was spread abroad through the whole country, but no one had any fresh figs in the month of January. At last, however, there was a woman who had found a fig tree close by the side of her house, protected from the cold winds by the house and by the high wall of her garden. This woman had a few fresh figs, but they were small and not very good. Send them to the little maid who is sick, advised her neighbors. Indeed, I'll send them as soon as my son can get ready to start, replied the good woman. Now the woman had two sons. One of them was foolish, but the other was considered one of the cleverest youths in the whole countryside. He left home immediately with the best of the figs in his basket. On the way, he met a woman dressed in blue with a child in her arms. It was really the Holy Mother and her child, but he did not recognize them. What are you carrying in your basket? asked the woman. I am carrying horns, replied the clever youth. Yes, you are carrying horns, replied the woman. The young man went on to the rich man's house, supposing that he was carrying figs in his basket, just as when he had started out. The basket had grown heavy. What do you have in your basket? asked the rich man when he saw the youth at his door. I have brought some fresh figs from my garden to your daughter who is ill, replied the clever one. The rich man was delighted. He opened the basket, then he shook the boy roughly by the collar and pushed him away down the steep steps. There were horns in his basket. What do you mean by playing such a trick on me? called the rich man after him. Never let me see your face in these parts again. There were still a few of the poorest of the fresh figs remaining on the tree. The foolish son begged his mother for permission to carry them to the little maid who was sick. Yes, go with them, replied his mother. Who knows but you may wed the rich man's daughter. She laughed as she said it. The boy who was foolish started for the rich man's house with the figs in his basket. They were only a few and poor little things indeed. On the way he met a woman dressed in blue with a child in her arms. What are you carrying in your basket? asked the woman. Fresh figs for a little maid who is sick, replied the boy. Yes, you are carrying figs, said the woman. The boy opened his basket. Here, take one for the baby, he said. He's a lovely child. He gave one of the best figs to the baby and went on his way to the rich man's house. What have you in your basket, asked the rich man. Fresh figs from my garden for your daughter who is sick, replied the boy. The rich man opened the basket with a scowl upon his face. He well remembered how he had been tricked before. Then his eyes grew wide with surprise. What? Figs like this in January? He cried in amazement. The figs had grown large and beautiful on the road to the rich man's house. They filled the whole basket. The little maid was so happy when she saw them that she began to grow better immediately. When her father saw that the youth was foolish, he repented his promise to give his daughter in marriage to any young man who brought fresh figs to her. However, he had given his word, and it was not a thing to be lightly broken. I'll tell you what to do to get out of your difficulty, said his friend to whom he told his trouble. Turn two lively rabbits out on the mountain, and tell the boy that he'll lose his life if he doesn't catch them and bring them back at night. This is exactly what the rich man did. The poor youth tried in vain to catch the rabbits. He got very tired and hot, and foolish as he was, 
he knew enough to realize that the task set for him was quite impossible. Suddenly, he saw the woman dressed in blue standing before him with the child in her arms. What is the matter? she asked him. The boy told her how he would lose his life if he did not catch the rabbits and bring them back to the rich man at nightfall. The woman cut a reed and made a pipe of it. Play on this pipe, she said, and the rabbits will come back to you of their own accord. The youth played such sweet music on his pipe that the two rabbits came running up to him immediately. It was all he could do to keep away the other beasts and birds. Everything which heard the music was charmed by it. On his way back to the rich man's house, he met two men who had been sent to kill him. No one had dreamed, of course, that he'd really catch the rabbits. The two men were so surprised when they saw them in the bag that their eyes stuck out. The rich man was even more amazed. As for the little maid who had been sick, when she heard the sweet music which the youth played upon the pipe, she was quite ready to marry him. The wedding was celebrated with great joy. The End Okay, and story number two. The Master of Magic. The story of a boy who learned his lessons in school. Once upon a time there lived a man who had three sons. The two older ones worked in the fields, but the youngest one went to school. He learned how to read and write and do sums and make drawings. At last, he even learned magic. The two elder brothers complained to their father about him one day. Their hearts were bitter against him. It's not fair, father, they said. We work hard every day in the fields and bring home money to enrich the family. Why shouldn't our brother work too? He does nothing except study. The youngest son heard their words of complaint. Will you go hunting with me tomorrow, father? He asked. I have learned much magic. In fact, I have become a master of magic. I will turn myself into a hunting dog if you will go into the fields with me. The next day, the young man changed himself by magic into a hunting dog, and his father went with him to the fields. He bagged many rabbits that day. As they returned home, he met one of his friends. What luck today? asked his friend. The hunter proudly displayed the rabbits he had in his bag. I have them thanks to my dog, he said. I'd like to buy that dog of yours, said his friend. What will you take for him? The father named an enormous price, and to his great surprise, his friend accepted it. The money was passed over at once, and the hunting dog went home with his new master. The next day they went on a hunting expedition into the deep forest. Suddenly the dog disappeared. His master called and whistled to him in vain. Finally he was obliged to return home without him. He had lost both the dog and the money he had paid for him. Have you seen my hunting dog? were his words for many weeks to everyone he met. His hunting dog had fled into the deep forest and once more resumed his original form. He returned home and told his two brothers that in a single day he had earned for his father more than their combined efforts for many weeks. Indeed, it was quite true. The next day the young man said to his father, Will you buy a saddle and bridle for me if I turn myself into a horse? His father made the purchase and then the young man changed into a handsome black horse. His father rode him up and down the streets very proudly. The great magician noticed this beautiful beast, called the man to him and said, That is a very good horse you are riding. What will you sell him for? The father named an enormous price, but he at once paid it cheerfully. He ordered the horse placed in his stables. Now this great magician had a beautiful daughter who was very fond of horses. She went out to inspect his new purchase as soon as it was brought home. She noticed that the horse ate nothing. What a beauty, she cried as she stroked his glossy black coat. You are the handsomest horse in the stable. Why don't you eat? I believe your bridle is hurting you. I'm going to take it off. As soon as the bridle was removed, it changed into a bird and flew out the window. The great magician at that moment changed himself into a hawk and killed the bird, never dreaming that it was the bridle of the new horse he had purchased. 
The next morning, when the great magician went to mount his beautiful black steed, there was no new horse to be found in the stable. The horse had changed into a kernel of corn. The great magician transformed himself into a hen to eat up the corn, but the youth was too quick for him. He changed into a dog and seized the hen between his teeth and gave it a good shaking. Then he returned to his own form and explained the whole affair to the great magician. You surely are a master of magic, was the comment of the magician. When the great magician had forgiven him for the shaking he had received when he was in the form of a hen, he gladly gave his consent to his daughter's marriage to the master of magic. The end. I really like in the first one where the foolish but kind-hearted son gets the bride. Sometimes you can be too tricky for your own good. And in the second one, I would have liked to have seen a longer wizard battle, but it was fun anyway. And cool linguistic trivia by the way, wizard is just the word wise with the A-R-D suffix, meaning full of that quality, like a drunkard or a coward. So wizard is just a really wise person. And the podcast shout-out is to a new one that I have come across recently, the Teacher Think Aloud podcast. As a teacher who is always trying to do better for my students and keep an eye on how I am doing, I really appreciate this podcast for helping teachers be on the ball about observing their actions and what kind of interactions they have with their students. It is always wonderful to reflect. Hosts Anna and Shay really help keep teachers grounded and reflecting. And if you love what they do as much as I do, go and give them a rating and review and tell them how much you appreciate their hard work. And the listener shout out is to Vilnius, Lithuania. Named for the Vilnia River, Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania. I just recently learned about the Kingdom of Lithuania, which reached back from the Baltic all the way down to the Black Sea. And it was followed by the massive Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which covered most of Eastern Europe. So it's pretty cool if you have a chance to look that up. And so to my listener in Vilnius, I say, Achu ir labanaktis, salju sabnu. Thank you, good night, and sweet dreams.